Thank you all. We're, we're nearing the end of this journey of, of session, so I appreciate, I appreciate you all still hanging out here on a beautiful Saturday. Um, uh, at this point, I'm going to introduce uh, Travis Love. Um, he's, he's all things Microsoft, apparently. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's fantastic. He's been in security for, for about 10 years. Um, with that, I will turn it over to you and let you kick off your presentation. Thank you very much. Um, so today we're going to talk about uh, cross-site scripting UI regressing. Um, thanks for coming. Um, this is uh, something I came across a few months ago. Um, and I thought it was really interesting and I wanted to share it. So I was like, we'll see if it works to talk. And I submitted it. And they're like, we think it works for a talk. So here I am. A um, little bit about myself. Um, I do office and office security engineer. Um, various certifications in security, but the most unique and the one I'm most proud of is I'm mouse certified for Access 2000. Um, some of you may know what that is, some of you may not. Basically, it means if you have an Access 2000 database, I can set up and run that thing for you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just to show how unique and special it is, does anyone else here have that? What's <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I, I just want to take a second to pause. Um, so, cross site scripting, the UI redressing is really neat. Um, but it's really cross-site scripting itself. When you pair it with cross-site request forgery, that's when it's going to become really, really dangerous. Um, not to say this isn't really dangerous, but that's where it, in my opinion, just really showcases how dangerous it can be. Um, but maybe you come across a site that has cross-site scripting vulnerability, but you know it's just a brochure site. So there's no login, there's no request to be made uh, to create a user account or anything like that. So cross-site request forgery doesn't make sense. Or maybe you don't have access to the back end of the site, so you don't know what requests need to be made. And, you know, maybe it's just not an option for it. Um, so I like telling these stories. Um, so when I do a, a pin test, um, I absolutely hate writing reports. I'm not going to stand here and say I like writing reports. It's like the worst thing ever. But what I like is when it's done. The story that I get to tell, the narrative that I get to tell, that, that is valuable to me. I love sitting at the port end and seeing people react to it. Um, and that's kind of where it, this comes into play is because, you know, an alert box finding, you know, what does that mean? No one's going to really connect to what that means. Um, you know, a pop-up. <laughs> um, Document.cookie, sure, if, you know, you don't have the session protected by HTTP only, sure, that, that can be valuable, you can show that. But, you know, an alert box, it doesn't convey risk. People who don't understand the depth of process scripting, they're not going to understand what that actually means. Um, same thing with this. You have an alert box with cookies in it. That's great. Maybe there's session data, maybe there's not, but you have to articulate what that means, and it's not nearly as impactful. Um, so some of you might be thinking, why not use a keylogger? <coughs> and a keylogger is excellent. You know, if I do cross that script and you get a keylogger rolling, that's fine. It's going to articulate, you know, impact pretty well. Um, but it's not as fun, and that'd be a different talk, so we're not going to talk about keyloggers. Um, so a few months ago, I was on um, Swiss, Whiskey, Swiss Keys repo for payload level things, um, and I came across this little tiny snippet here for UI redressing, and it was just this little script thing here, never seen it before, and I was like, huh, what's that? And so I started playing with it, um, and that's kind of how we get into part one here. Um, so HTML5 gave us these two wonderful things, history.replace state and history push state. Um, so what they do, is uh, in practice, you take history replace state and you do uh, normal, which we will get to those for those who are curious what those normals are for, and then you do dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash slash login. Um, for you, those of you who are curious dot dot slashing, it's just like record reversal. You're just swinging it all the way back up to the root of the, the website um, and changing it and appending it to dot log here slash login. In the real world, um, the reason this gets used is to uh, almost like little placeholders. So if you had um, a gallery website, like Pinterest or Instagram, something like that, and you're clicking all these photos, they can change your URL bar at the top. It says B. Uh, so if we had like the DC universe, if you had a picture of Batman and Joker, and you clicked on Batman, it would change your URL bar to say Batman. If you clicked on Joker, it would change it to say Joker. Just better user experience. Um, you can direct link to it, perhaps, things like that. So if you wrap it in script tags, what you get, you'll rewrite the URL bar. Um, obfuscate it a little bit, 
I say obfuscated, it's just URL encoding it and not even entirely URL encoding it. Um, just makes it look a little bit uh, more realistic. Um, so we've got a demo website, which we'll get to in just a second. So we've got demo.bsides, um, and then we've got form.php, which is just a simple PHP form page. Um, and then it parrot is basically just a value you feed into a parameter, then it just parrots back out. We'll kind of cover that in just a second. <coughs> and then you, you dump your script in there. So on to demo one, um, and unlike some of the demos I've seen where they made it all fancy, um, we are going to try just a live demo. Um, if not, I do have videos, I promise you. Um, but this is also the part where I make everyone sick by sliding back and forth. Um, all right, so we've got um, Yogi's Parrot. Um, and you, you have no idea how happy I was to find a page that had Yogi's Parrot and a picture of Yogi's Parrot and a parrot. Uh, the internet, you ask the internet, and it will provide. All right, so we've got uh, demo.bsides. Um, then when a B-size form, parrot equals meow, and so down here you see you entered meow. That's all the site does. It's really simple. There's no security here whatsoever. Um, we're going to see what I copy into that video. So we'll get to that. All right, so we've got the same thing, parrot, and then we've got our script here. No, 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 login, so on and so forth. Hit enter, and we just rewrite our URL bar to look like login. So from a phishing standpoint, this is really interesting because you've just rewritten this to show slash login instead of you know whatever particular page someone happened to be on. Cool thing, if this is an HTTPS site, certificate's still valid because you're still at the same site. It gets even weirder because this page doesn't exist on the server. Um, if you try to view the source of the page while you're here, it won't work because the page doesn't exist. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a weird quasi space that you're in because you are technically just on the user endpoint at, at this point. So there's, there's nothing that really exists anywhere. You're just kind of in DOM, JavaScript land where you're at. All right, back to the click again. All right, so I told you we would talk about the nulls. Um, so the way they get broken out is this refresh state. Um, it's the same for replace also. It's data, title, and URL. So data, you can push data to the DOM. Uh, if you wanted to push a cookie, you can. Um, last time I did this presentation, someone asked, well, what about, um, you know, this clearly it works for reflected, works for DOM-based, does it work for persistent cross-site scripting? And the answer is yes. Um, it gets a little bit more challenging because you don't want the user behavior to be go to a login page every time they get your page. That's Someone's going to call in and report it and talk about it, and that's not fun. But if you give them a cookie that says that they've been there and already entered their credentials for you, it just loads a regular page. Um, so you can do that in the data parameter. You can also just do it in the script that loads. Um, the title, the title parameter allows you to change the title of the page. So you've got your URL bar that you can change. You can also change the title. Downfall is none of the browsers support it at all. So it's there, maybe in the future it'll work, <laughs> maybe it won't. Um, and then the URL, obviously, dot dot slash, dot dot slash, um, login, or whatever you want it to be. Um, some limitations with it, it's the same origin only. Um, so you can't make it look like a different page. So that's kind of a downfall. It makes sense when you think about it, but when I first came across it, I was like, well, this will be fine. I'll just make it look like Twitter, or I'll make it look like something else. But not, not, not the case. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you for the last one. You're very happy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so document.body.innerHTML. Um, this is just standard JavaScript, but what it allows us to do is we can take the document, which is the website, the body tag, innerHTML, we can write it to do whatever we want. So we can take our script <laughs> tag here and say document.body.innerHTML is equal to your, 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 your center. <coughs> Please log in, and it's just a login form, that's all it says. So when we pair it here with our replace state, we now have two things combined, and we've completely rewritten the website from what it was before, which will be right into demos two and three. And I'm so happy, I had a typo up there for a long time, and I wasn't gonna fix it, and I fixed it today, 
Where did where did Yogi's parrot come from? The idea. Do you, do you have a parrot? And that's like your. No, I don't. Um, <laughs> um, I I needed a canary username and a canary password, <laughs> and Yogi Bear is really easy to remember, and it kind of morphed into a, a persona online. And so everything I do is Yogi themed and or and as banana themed because <laughs> it's a really deep world with lots of characters. Um, so if I I'm spinning up an active directory domain. You know, bedrock.local was a subdomain of rockhead. It, there's just characters and users all over the place. We just really don't have to think about that. Any other questions? <laughs> yeah, very interesting. Thanks, Travis. Yeah, yeah. Yeah.